as lucky as some. Some chefs get to have a whole garden in their backyard. But to be in a place like Cambridge right now and surrounded by a great variety of really tremendous farmers, that's I'm in an enviable position. We work with a woman who grows just greens and herbs. This is something called Shungi Ku, which is actually chrysanthemum. We've got our chamomile flowers, literally fresh chamomile. We like to work with some of the products like this that have hardly traveled, that still have a lot of life in them. And I think that's really important to think about the fact that there is still life in your product. And we got all these crazy herbs that she grows. This is something that's called calamint. Pea greens that you see a lot of. This is all from this woman's farm. This is just happens to be the delivery that came in right now. I and mean, we work with 14, 16 different farms, two different meat co-ops in Vermont. These are beach pea flowers. We like to work with some things that a lot of other people don't work with. A lot of the stuff grows naturally. This is beautiful sorrel. Sorrel almost grows like a weed in many fields, but it's very bright and lemony. When it cooks, it almost gets this ethereal quality where it melts into itself and becomes very silky. Tops to fennel. We save our own, but this is a special type. It's called bronze fennel tops. These are the flowers off of tatsoi or other cabbage. You might walk by this and all you see is what you're familiar with. The cabbage that's growing out of the ground. And not realizing that there's other parts of the plant that might be hard to ship. Then maybe that's why you don't see them in your grocery store because they're very, very fragile. So therefore, somewhere along the line, the market for it's disappeared. But meanwhile, when you can get it a couple miles down the road, I've got a woman in Belmont. She didn't even realize you could eat these until I started walking along, helping her pick one day. And she's like, what are you doing? I'm like, well, I'll buy these from you. I mean, these are fantastic. But she's like, well, I can't even take them to the market. They're too fragile. I'm like, I work two miles down the road. Why don't, why don't you just give them to me? So from a cook chef standpoint, it's really cool. From a sustainability standpoint, we're using every part of the plant. And then from an aesthetic standpoint, they're gorgeous. So at Cooking Street, we have a very small restaurant. And a lot of what we do is on a daily basis, this is all we have to work with for refrigeration. One of our own philosophies is to work with whole animals as much as possible so that nothing goes to waste. So this is a sucking pig, and this whole animal is going to get confit. Every single part of an animal can be used. This is quail. More often than not, what you get with a quail is it's already been boned out, and you don't ever see this part, you don't ever see this part, so it kind of looks more like a little small chicken that you might be familiar with at a grocery store. But this part actually makes great sauce along with this, and inside here, is great little quail livers and it actually goes into a tureen. And then the bones themselves, if we do decide to bone them out, it gets turned into sauce or a soup or a consomme. Even this teeny little bird that weighs about 12 ounces or less, it, nothing's gonna go to waste on this bird. This is our own merguez sausage from the whole lambs that we get. Inevitably, you've got a lot of little bits and pieces. These are all the little scraps that we just compiled over a short amount of time and nothing hit the garbage. Everything is there and it's super tasty. That's how sausage just sort of came to be. And these are Kluat plums. This did travel from California, but an organic small farm. Honestly, this is a dilemma. I mean, I'm in Cambridge, Massachusetts. I'm not going to see any stone fruit until August. Yes, I'm a restaurateur. Yes, there's a demand. So I'm definitely trying to say that I'm not a hypocrite. And if I'm going to do something like this, it's coming from a place that I believe in. It's, you know, it's grown the right way. This is the pea pods. To a lot of people, again, something that's just gonna end up in the trash. These are unbelievably sweet, really beautiful. We're actually gonna blanch them just for a brief few seconds just to set their color, and then we're gonna juice them. And we make a sauce out of that. We were serving it with squid yesterday. I mean, it's, it's great flavor. I mean, I guess you can look at it from a, a no waste issue where why throw it away if it can get used? But I think there's a lot of ways that you can get flavor out of a lot of our ingredients that people don't realize. We get unbelievable radishes from a couple different other farmers. I think a lot of people always think of radishes as those little red balls that come in those little cello bags. But these are actually just the greens. And we'll braise these. We'll turn them into a soup. You can think about all the different ways that this could be cool from a political standpoint, from a philosophical standpoint, also from a money standpoint. I paid you know, my $2 a pound for all my radishes. Don't I want to get the most out of them? And if I can learn how to make this taste pretty good, actually sometimes I can make it taste really good. If I can pick things that have traveled less, you have to put yourself at the whim of the farmer and mother nature and, and the amount of people that are going to come tonight too so I can create a menu that's going to make it through the entire evening. And that's part of the fun.